There we go. Are good? Yep. Okay. So why is it that when it comes to the painless killing of a person suffering from a painful and incurable disease, that 18 out of the 21 of us saw it as a selfish act to take one's life? And this is where we come up to the topic of euthanasia. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Uh -huh. no. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. Okay, so <laughs> euthanasia has really been a hot topic since the early 17th century. And this guy right here, Dr. Jack Trevolkian, is really the guy associated with euthanasia, kind of made the term famous. He was born on May 26, 1928 in Pontiac, Michigan. And he was a physician who practiced um, assisted euthanasia. He also served eight years in prison because of the fact that um, the court questioned his legality on his practices, euthanasia. And many people did argue on if he was wrongly convicted just because when he um, assists people in their euthanasia, he took them up to a machine that would, at the press of a button, deliver a death lethal dose of medicine to their bodies, evidently killing them. But he wasn't. Um, pulling the trigger, he put that power in their hands. So the types of euthanasia, there's passive euthanasia, voluntary, indirect, and assisted euthanasia. Passive is withholding medical treatment from a person to where they slowly kind of die on. Um, voluntary and involuntary euthanasia is involuntary is when you, kind of like the death penalty, when you have the consent to give, but um, you don't want to die. And then voluntary is when you do give the consent to somebody to help you. Indirect is um, kind of just giving medical treatment to speed up the process of dying. And then there's assisted euthanasia, which is what Dr. Krabolke practiced. Next, we have Nancy Cruzen. About 25 years ago, Nancy Cruzen was involved in a fatal car crash that left her brain dead. And the only reason she was considered alive is because they say she had a heartbeat. So, six months after she, her fatal accident, Supreme Court ruled on her death, meaning that she really had no right, like, reason to live. And 12 days after the Supreme Court ruling, her parents won a case to remove the feeding tube from her, which was the only thing keeping her alive. And later on that day, she died at 33. But really, this brought up a hot dispute on, like, when families have the, when and how families can withdraw medical treatment from a loved one resulting in their death. Next we have Chantelle Cerebre. Chantelle Cerebre was a French retired teacher, a retired French teacher, who suffered from a type of cancer called extension neuroblastoma, which is a cancer that manifests at really high pace. And if you don't know that cancer already affects you really fast, multiply that by a thousand and you have what she has. So, she really made headlines when she appealed to the French president with the, with the case of euthanasia, um, stating that one would not let an animal suffer what I have endured. So on an online poll conducted by a pro-euthanasia group called Dignity to Die, they're Canadian, um, they found out that 90% 90, 90 of all participants on the online poll said that no to euthanasia, that euthanasia was not ethical, meaning that only 10% would choose euthanasia. And if you put that in a perspective to our class, or summer school, the class before the second period, that means <laughs> only two out of the 21 of us would have said yes to euthanasia. And what people don't realize is that euthanasia is kind of already taking over the world, but in slow manners. The Czech Republic has already legalized euthanasia, Switzerland, Mexico, Colombia, Belgium, and even parts of the U.S. like New Mexico, Washington, Oregon, and Iowa. So really the only arguments that people do bring up against euthanasia is that it devalues human life, that it will soon become involuntary, and that it will no longer be used for the terminally ill. But what people fail to see is that we are not capable of bearing someone else's pain. We are not capable of fighting their battle. We are there for emotional support, and that's it. So for the 18 of y'all who said that taking your life is selfish when you don't know their pain, shows that 18 of us really need to reevaluate who is being selfish. Thank you. Kobe, go up there and wait for them. I think they're I think they're gonna be here in like two seconds. They get no tip, I can punch them in the mouth, right? They get no tip.
Wait, does anyone have a penny? I mean, I don't, she said we have to call because it's a school, a security call. That's just ridiculous. All right, Miss Rose, uh, Rosemary. Okay. All right.